Hi everyone and welcome to Early Morning Prayer Request and Devotions. I hope everybody's doing good this morning. On our prayer request today, pray for the people in Maui and Hawaii that have been affected by the wildfires. Caden's aid was restored and he's able to return to college. Kathy said thanks for to everyone for the prayers. Okay, that's a little weak on that. And uh, Susie is having a hard time dealing with her husband's death. Pray for her for comfort and peace. And Uraine is in pain. His jaw is hurting him. Pray it gets better and his pain goes away and any other pain that he has. Jackie's Aunt Mary passed away. Pray for Jackie and the family for peace and comfort. Kim needs prayer that they approve her unemployment benefits. Our son-in-law will hurt his back. Pray that he gets better and can go back to work. <coughs> Lori is having a gastric gastric emptying test. Pray it helps find out what's wrong. Uh, pray for Beth and Carmen. Their air conditioner uh, isn't working. Beth, is your, uh, did you ever get that working? Uh, le let me know about that. I, I seem like I, I saw something on it, but I don't remember if I wrote it down. Maybe this is when I wrote it down. I, I'm not for sure, so let me know how things are going, Beth. I um, hope that they can... It, it's awful in Texas anyway. I mean, it really is, so I can't imagine uh, not having uh, any air conditioner. <coughs> okay, and uh, YC's mom, Aline, fell and then had a heart attack. She's in the ICU so they can monitor her, pray that she'll be okay. At first, uh, when she fell, um, they thought that it might be like a blockage in her heart, that it was maybe not causing the blood to go up to, to her brain and she would pass out when she stood up. But uh, now that she, they have uh, examined her more and stuff, uh, they realize that it was a heart attack. So hopefully they can uh, treat that better than they would have because uh, she's 85 and she didn't want any surgery for the blockage. So uh, let's pray that they can, you know, find a way to, to make her better. And uh, of course, YC's been very upset and who wouldn't, you know. I mean, it's about the same age as my mom. I, I think she's 86 now. Okay, our scripture of the day comes from Deuteronomy 16, 9 through 16. And I've never had anything in this particular uh, chapter of Deuteronomy. This is the first time I've had uh, any to, to read from this, uh, from the 16th verse. Uh, Count off seven weeks from the time you began, begin to put the sickle to the standing grain. Excuse me. Then celebrate the festival of weeks to the Lord your God by giving a free will offering in proportion to the blessings the Lord your God has given you. And rejoice before the Lord your God at the place he will choose as a dwelling for his name. You, your sons and daughters, your male and female servants, the Levites in your towns, and the foreigners, the fatherless and the widows living among you. Remember that you were slaves in Egypt and follow carefully these decrees. Celebrate the festival of tabernacles for seven days after you have gathered the produce of your threshing floor and your wine press. Be joyful at your festival, you, your sons and daughters, your male and female servants, and the Levites, the foreigners, the fatherless, and the widows who live in your towns. For seven days celebrate the festival to the Lord your God at the place the Lord will choose. For the Lord your God will bless you in all your harvest and in all the work of your hands and your joy will be complete. Three times a year all your men must appear before the Lord your God at the place he will choose at the festival of unleavened bread, the festival of weeks, and the festival of tabernacles. No one should appear before, God, before the Lord empty-handed. Okay. All right, and our devotion today is entitled Festival of Worship. Uh, 
Attending a large event might change you in a surprising way. After interacting with more than 1,200 people at multi-day multi -day gatherings in the UK and US, researcher Daniel Yudkin and his colleagues learned that large festivals can impact our moral compass and even affect our willingness to share resources with others. The research found that 63% of attendees had a transformative experience at the festival that also left them feeling more connected to humanity and more generous towards friends, family, and even complete strangers. When we gather with others to worship God, however, we can experience more than merely the social transformation of, secular, of a secular festival. We commune with God himself. God's people undoubtedly experienced that connection to him when they gathered in Jerusalem in ancient times for their sacred festivals throughout the year. They traveled without modern conveniences to be present at the temple three times a year for the Festival of Unleavened Bread, the Festival of Weeks, and the Festival of Tabernacles. These gatherings were times of solemn remembrance worship and enjoying before the Lord with family, servants, foreigners, and others. Let's gather with others to worship, to help one another to continue to enjoy Him and trust in His faithfulness. How have you experienced a sense of connection with God when gathering with others for worship? How has the presence of others helped? Thank you, God, for inviting your people to worship you together. And Lord, I want to pray today for everyone on our prayer list. Please help all of them with their different needs. In the Lord's name I pray. Amen. I hope you enjoyed this early morning prayer request and devotions. If you did, I hope you'll press that like button. Also, subscribe if you haven't already and share this out. And hit that so you get all my videos as soon as they come out. Everybody, I hope you have a great morning. I'd love to see you later on a morning coffee break. Bye, everyone, and God bless.